horses on New Year's Eve, walking down my Brooklyn street. And I saw fireworks in your eyes. I was falling, falling, falling one year ago at this time. Now I'm trying, trying, trying to get back my mind. I'll take my photographs, wrap them in bubble wrap. I'm leaving for the weekend, or maybe for the year. I'll secure all my edges, all the fragile remarks that were taken the wrong. So here's this uh, here's this frame I made for my um, solar. Ooh, can't see it that well, but this uh, is curved to fit the slope of the roof. This will fit over kind of like a lumber rack. Let's put it down here. See, it's kind of like a lumber rack. Um, kind of a mini lumber rack and uh, then I've got an aluminum frame that's going to fit right into here I'm going to attach the solar panels to that and then if I want to get fancy I'll be able to flip it up or back to point to the Sun if I want to I might not bother with it but I made this uh, with my little $90 Harbor Freight welder and uh, you know I'd really I'd never done any welding until this project and I got this thing and I went through a roll of wire learning how to use it and uh, you know I'm not great at it but um, my welds seem to be strong and uh, I seem to be able to make things like this that I need so if you're thinking about getting into welding yeah just go for it it really you know to master it would take quite a bit but just to be able to whip out things like this um, it seems doable. At least if you're good at cutting, measuring and cutting stuff. I've also got the Harbor Freight metal bandsaw, which is a big help for cutting these angles. And the way I did that is I laid my aluminum frame up on top of the bus. Here, hang on, let's look at that. So I've got the, there's this, this old ladder that I actually ran over by mistake with the bus a while back and uh, ruined the ladder but I salvaged these pieces of some of the rails and uh, you can't see it that well but it's aluminum frame I centered on top of the bus where I want it to go and then I cut some flat stock and uh, laid it up and uh, put a piece of wood next to it and measured the angle that I wanted to cut to make it fit and uh, the result is that frame in the back we just looked at
So here's the rack on the bus. And uh, I use this stuff underneath there that's meant to for like a, a pickup camper. It's kind of a, a foam thing right here. It's it's black and the stuff has been the the rack is black so you can't really see it, but it's there. And then you see the way this is attached here. Um, I can undo those bolts. I could make it fancy, you know, with a quick release thing or something. At this point I haven't bothered. Okay, and then the the solar panels. So there's uh, these two aluminum pieces that go across like this across the rack and the solar panels bolt to those. So there's that original steel rack I did and then it's got that aluminum frame and then there are uh, for each the solar panel is bolted to two pieces of angle aluminum they are riveted to that aluminum frame there so this uh, the rack holds three 100 watt solar panels and here's my up front here, here's the original. This is my original one. Um, this one's going to go away because I realized after I put it in, I, I want to put a vent here, and I didn't plan it out very well. And this, is, of course, is a little lame the way I attached it here. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, at some point, I'm going to make another rack like this uh, behind, probably go behind where this one is and that'll be able to hold three more 100 watt solar panels which I think will probably be enough I guess depending on how you look at it and during the winter now in Oregon you can see it's pretty overcast and I live in the woods anyway so during the winter uh, up at my house these things don't really do a lot at all during the summer they they do pretty well so I guess I need a wind generator at some point and then uh, let's take a look inside so here, in here they, they're bolted through, they come through here, and there's another one inside the cabinet. Um, so what I did is, uh, you may have seen it in the previous video, but I took a really long, it's like two foot long, eight, eighth inch bit, and you just drill that, it'll go all the way through, and it shows me where my pilot hole is, and then come back later with bigger, bigger bits. The solar from up up on the roof comes through here, right there, and uh, through that conduit all the way up to the controller up there. So eventually, I'm going to put a ceiling up here, which I think would help with the keeping it warmer in here. But um, you can see I keep messing, I keep drilling holes through the roof and things like that, so that's why I'm leaving this till last. So. Solar comes through there. Now this, I didn't know, I'm learning this as I go. This is kind of a cheap controller. I found out that I can get a, um, I think it's called an MPPT controller, which will, um, well, without getting too technical, but it basically converts the extra voltage into current uh, because the solar is coming in at like 18 volts or something like that. Those are supposed to work better, and it's also supposed to work better to use one for each uh, panel, especially since some of them are in the shade all day. Or not all day, but part of the day. So that's going to be one of my upgrades is to get a MPPT controller and get one for each panel. And, uh, and then I've got this switch here that just shuts the solar off if I want to do that. And that comes over here to the battery monitor. So you can see I've used 2.73 amp hours since charging the battery. This is this is pretty cool. You you definitely want one of these. This is a um, trimetric. Or either one of these or a different brand. I like this one. Shows me the voltage. Shows me the number of amps. It's because I got the the lights on. It's using one and a half amps. 98% full. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.